Guys, this is Lord Chael speaking on behalf of our show sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so you can officially call yourself a lord or a lady. Established Titles is not just about your ego, you also get to do some good. In addition to your new fancy title, Established Titles supports global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help with their afforestation efforts. Your title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Scotland. And your official certificate proves your title, as well as your unique plot number, where you can see the exact location of your land. Getting the certificate even allows you to officially change your name to Lord or Lady. Put it on your credit cards, your plane tickets, or even your dating profiles. Established Titles is currently having an extended New Year sale just for you guys. And on top of that, you can get an additional 10% off any purchase you make with discount code CHAIL. So click on the link below or go to EstablishedTitles.com slash CHAIL. Use the promo code CHAIL to save an extra 10% today. Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou were going at it. Is that the word? Are, are they're going at it on Twitter? I, I don't know if I agree with that because the level of silliness that they did was really not fun or interesting in the least. So Francis has let Tyson know that as soon as he finishes business here with Surreal Gone, he will fight Tyson anywhere, in a ring, in a cage, or in a phone booth. Now, how are you going to get a camera in the phone booth? What does that look like? The fans fill up an arena and there's a phone booth in the middle and then they go in and then who wins? Like whoever comes out because we're not going to see what happens. Like the whole thing just got weird when they said phone booth. But Tyson Fury added to the silliness himself by letting Francis know that he would box Francis wearing MMA gloves. So now you're left with the same, where's the camera going? the phone booth question. Where are you going to box in MMA gloves? Like who's going to sanction that? You just limited our options and who's going to watch that? And what's that going to be like when ESPN is trying to cover that on SportsCenter? Because they can't call it boxing. Boxing isn't done with four ounce gloves. So now you've got a new sport created. And then everybody that's trying to cover it or explain it is just going to throw their hands up and just say to hell with them. Let, let me know who wins. Best of luck to both of you. Here's a hundred bucks. It's just weird. Where's the pride within your sport? If you are a boxer, you don't change the rules of boxing. You stand by your sport. Here's how we do it here if this is where you're coming. We've got things we can discuss. Is the, is the, is the ring going to be 17 and a half feet or is it going to be 20 and a half feet? Are the gloves going to be 12 ounce or are they going to be 14 ounce? Are they going to have horse hair or are they going to be made in Mexico? Like there's discussions that you can have within the rule and sport of boxing as dumb and silly as they seem. But you cannot go and wear MMA gloves. That is no longer boxing. That is now something else. Why would you not have the pride within your own sport to stand by the sport? It's just one of these baffling things that guys always think they can be smarter, they can get away with something. If you're changing anything, it's because somebody doesn't want it. Nobody's tried to negotiate the change of the rules, the rounds, the weight class, and or in this case, the glove size. Nobody's offered it. You came and offered it, which means you're a terrible negotiator. It's a very silly thing to do. But these two want to go and do something. Why don't they just arm wrestle? In all fairness, and I don't say that to be silly, would you guys be interested if Tyson Fury was going to arm wrestle Francis Ngannou? What if we build it up? What if we showed you some training footage? Maybe it had to do with, with guys that were arm wrestling. Maybe it had to do with the weight room or technique that they have. Maybe we could talk to their trainers. Maybe we could weigh them in, face them off, and, and have them arm. I mean, if you're just looking to hurt the other guy, you have no other goal or incentive here. Your market has now changed. The tough man, barbaric, two men enter, one guy leaves era died in 1993. And not just because perception of people changed, because there wasn't enough people that wanted to see that. We wanted to see a sport, not a spectacle. So it just gets very weird that these two are even talking about that. And then you have the other side, which is, is Francis focused on Surreal Gone? Is he aware that any hopes that he has in boxing are gone the moment he loses that belt? Because I'm not positive that he is. And this wouldn't just care to Francis, this will cover to every single UFC fighter who's ever thought about going and doing something else, in this case, the world of boxing. You do not have value. Conor McGregor, when he went and did it, did not have value. None. Zero. Conor McGregor brought nothing to that. 
Somebody paid $100 million to have the two-division sitting UFC champion. That's what got $100 million. Make no mistake. Is Francis aware that whatever hopes they... And by the way, I'm on Francis's side. I really like to see him get that. That seems like a big goal and a cool thing to do. And if he can cross over and get in there with Fury and they can figure things out, even if it's with the silly gloves, I am on board, in all fairness. Giving them a hard time. But in fairness, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing because it's a hard thing. It's also a cool thing because it's it's a very unique thing. And if this is his goal and his vision, he sees it through, man, hats off to Francis, in all fairness. But does Francis know that Francis Ngano, on a contract, gets no money? The UFC champion going over to take on the boxing champion, that draws. I'm not positive that that, that, that distinction is made. I'm not positive that anybody explained that to him. There's a lot of things that come along with being the UFC champion. Not only does the media come with you, not only does the fan base come with you, not only does curiosity come with you, but the promoter comes with you. And whoever's writing the check is definitely factoring in the promoter, Dana. If those things are gone and you've just got two things to put on a contract, first name Francis, last name Angano, you're not getting paid. You're not selling out an arena. You're not getting the pundits to come behind you. You're not getting the media. You're not getting the build. So it's one of these things I'm just asking. I'm asking a simple question. Is Francis aware that these things are absolutely tied together? Being the champion and then going to, is, is he aware of that? And moreover, I know the concern of you guys. I read this in your comments every single day, which is if Francis is focused and or thinking about Tyson and not thinking about Surreal, isn't that a problem? Now, that one's not as easy to answer because I had inside of me the same thing that Francis has where the last thing I'm going to focus on is the thing that I have to do next. I would go to a press conference opposite Anderson Silva, and I talk about Vitor Belfort the whole time. But that wasn't just because I thought that made good sense. I don't need to sell the, 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 the Anderson fight. I've already got it. What I need is a job to go to tomorrow. So that made a level of sense. But on a personal note, from a psychological standpoint, I don't want to focus on the fight. I would experience something called paralysis by analysis. If I sat and focused on something, gave it my full attention, it would make me freeze up more, as opposed to being loose. And one way that I've always stayed loose is to just have a lot of balls in the air at one time. Never put everything into one basket. That's personal. Some of you will relate, go, yeah, Chael, I fully get that. I do the same thing. And some of you go, nah, I got to be laser fucking have tumult vision. That's okay. I won't question you, but you should not question, in this case, Francis. If he wants to kind of spread it around and look at his options, if that's a way of alleviating pressure or, or, or stress or creating some excitement, giving him motivation, Francis is not wrong. Francis is champion of the world. I don't think there's many things that Francis could do from an athletic preparation standpoint that could reasonably be questioned. It should be studied and then copied. He's the champion of the world. But it is a fair talking point because he's brought it to us in this business with Fury. It looks like if Francis is going to box, he's going to fight Fury. Can we all agree on that? And Fury really would do it. But Fury is also not after some ridiculous payday. He just wants the fight. He just wants to show he can deal with the power. He can deal with the skills. I get that. I understand that storyline. I don't know. You're, you're never going to win me over when the storyline is a cash grab. Even if it is a cash grab, if it's all about the money and I understand it, you got to convince me that it's not. I've got to know this is about something different. So what Tyson is attempting to do is tell the world, I have the bravery, I have the skills, this is a terrifying man, but not to me. I'm still the man, I'll do this any way you want, anywhere you want to do it, we'll even take the damn gloves off. All right, that's weird. It's just weird. I, I like fights. I'm a big fight fan. If two guys were fighting in the street outside right now, I'm not running to the window to watch. That would bother me. So if you're not going to have sport within it, if you're not going to have athleticism within it, if you're not going to have a historical breakdown behind it, that we can all come to the table with an understanding of what we're getting into behind, what are we doing it for? What are we doing it for? I want to fight you and you want to fight me. Really? Then let's go fight. Well, no, not so fast. I, I need that check first. Okay, great. Did you want to fight me because you've got the courage you, and you want to prove that you can handle my skills? Or do you just need a whole bunch of money? It's a big difference. And you're not wrong if the answer is money. You're making a mistake if you're not smart enough to disguise the fact that it's about the money. You're going to lose the audience. 
And once you start changing the rules of the sport, you're now doing something different. Boxing is not done in four ounce gloves anywhere in the world. Nowhere. No history of it. Boxing is done 10, 12, 14, sometimes 16 ounce gloves. Boxing is not done in 60 second rounds. Boxing is done in three minute rounds. If you change any of these things, you're now changing what you're doing. And we can't just call it boxing. They can't do that in the wrestling world, bring two guys together, change the out of bounds, change what you're doing, and then call it wrestling. The community would uproar and say, that's not, that's not wrestling. That's not what we do. And the community would be right. So where are the good old days where you stand by the pride of your sport? Go look to change the rules. This guy's already said he wants to box. Why are you trying to do him a favor and change the glove? He said he wants to box. Francis didn't ask you to put on some different gloves. Francis didn't try to tip the scales in his favor. He said, I will come over and box you. Box him.